conventional or easy oil deposits are in decline. Each new barrel of oil will become harder and more costly to produce. Tar sands, oil from bitumen, represent a new frontier. Investment in dirtier, unconventional forms of oil to meet the world's needs. Production of oil from tar sands generates on average three to five times more greenhouse gas emissions than conventional oil, representing a huge threat to the climate. Canada's tar sands are the second largest oil deposits in the world. Tar sands, it's a dirty oil, it's having high emission factors compared to conventional oil and it's devastating landscape for people living there. So it's impacting people, it's impacting climate, and it's, it's a future going to higher carbon emissions, whereas we all know we have to go to a lower carbon emission economy, and this is exactly the wrong direction. By destroying the environment, tar sands also threaten people's lives. The Canadian tar sand mines cover an area bigger than England, which includes over four million hectares of boreal forest inhabited by First Nations peoples. Why do you think Hudson Bay is so rich today? Because of us, us native people. They give us trinkets, trinkets. They give us trinkets, and they, they get big, big pile of beavers and made lots and lots of money. See what, what the oil company is doing to us. They're doing the same thing. Now the oil companies are starting to mine tar sands around the world with potentially devastating results. One of the countries with major deposits is the biologically diverse island of Madagascar. Nous essayons de, de prévenir les impacts et les dangers qui pourraient être envisagés pour cela, et aussi pour que Madagascar ne devienne pas comme euh, comme les pays où il existe déjà des exploitations, et notamment le Canada. Unless countries adopt policies to encourage the use of cleaner, non-fossil fuel-based energy. Dirty oil threatens to go global. Be aware that, that almost half of all the investments of the entire Shell company are now going into tar sands in Canada. They're not doing that for free. They are looking at the future and they think that Europe will massively import tar sand oil from Canada and therefore they are investing in it. European oil companies such as BP, NE, Shell and Total are investing in tar sands. Despite European Union policies to reduce dependency on fossil fuels and fight climate change, If we don't set a strong signal as Europe that we don't want these dirty oils, then oil companies like Shell will keep on investing in tar sands as they are doing right now. In 2008, the European Union adopted Fuel Quality Directive, and this directive obliges fuel suppliers to reduce the emissions from their fuels by 6% by 2020. This law therefore disincentivizes the imports of fuels with a lot of CO2, such as tar sands. In October 2011, the European Union issued a proposal recognizing that production of oil from tar sands results in 23% more greenhouse gas emissions than from conventional oil, officially labeling tar sands as a dirtier fuel. The proposal is being contested by some EU countries, including the Netherlands, the UK, and France, home to Shell, BP, and Total, with the backing of the Canadian government. The big question now is how uh, the greenhouse gas uh, value of the tar sands will be assumed. Is it going to be under the fuel quality directive kind of average, or will it have an actual value attached to it? In which case it would be very clearly environmentally destructive and very climate unfriendly. The final result of this directive may actually mean a, a, a stop or a go ahead for tar sands. 
In the meantime, the global expansion of tar sands mining is underway. Many tar sands deposits are found in the world's last remaining pristine environments. The implications are apparent in the case of Madagascar. Ce qu'on sait jusqu'à maintenant, c'est que le gisement de gré bitumné de Bemlang euh, euh, se place est classé euh, quatrième après la Russie, le Canada, le Venezuela en termes de quantité d'huile et de gisement. Depuis 2008 jusqu'en 2010, Total, euh, INP ont travaillé à faire des cordrilles et aussi des études des carottes pour voir euh, la qualité de, de bitume et aussi de pouvoir déterminer les méthodologies d'extraction euh, qui pourraient correspondre à, à ces gisements. Également, ils ont fait des études de l'hydrogéologie de la zone. On sait que euh, l'extraction aurait besoin de 10 barils d'eau pour un baril de pétrole. Total Madagascar est une société qui est en charge de l'exploration de crêpes bitumées à Pemblang. Il y a un contrat de partage de production entre l'État malgache et la société Total. Under its contract with the Madagascan state, Total must protect the environment and invest in the development of the surrounding communities. Total a donné 10 millions de dollars, 5 millions pour la réhabilitation de la route et 5 millions pour les œuvres sociales. On s'est intéressé l'année dernière et on a fait pas mal de descentes. There is less than 300 kilometers between the capital and the community at the center of Total's operations, Morafenbe. But with poor roads, it takes over 15 hours to make the journey. On a eu des meetings avec avec la population locale. Eux, ils disent que ils ne touchent pas de bénéfices directs, mais à chaque fois, le, la question de transparence, la question de partage d'informations, la question de participation publique était toujours invoquée. Comme dans tout pays africain, les gens espèrent un développement réel. Et ils espèrent aussi que le projet sera un porteur de développement pour eux, que leurs conditions de vie s'améliorent avec le projet et qu'ils mangent bien, qu'ils puissent envoyer leurs enfants à l'école et qu'ils puissent accéder à une bonne santé et tout ça. The mining of tar sands requires enormous quantities of water. Morafembe, however, lies in an area of drought and is dependent on water from one river. Toute la vie de la population de Mourafenb tourne autour de cette rivière. Il n'y a pas assez de pompes publiques ici. Toutes les femmes cherchent de l'eau là-bas, lavent leurs vaisselles, lavent leurs vêtements. Tout le monde prend leur pain sur, euh, dans la rivière. Et leur souci en fait c'est que si Total en fait entamera l'exploitation des crêpes bitumineux de Biemling, euh, la rivière risque d'être euh, utilisée puisque à Pemlang il n'y a pas une grande rivière comme ça. The local people have a precarious existence. Their livelihoods are based on cow herding and subsistence agriculture. On est actuellement dans le district de Morafenbe. C'est dans ce district qu'on trouve le gisement de de gris bitumé. 
Ce sont tous des populations pastorales. Et c'est dans ce, ce système qu'il y a le problème avec Total actuellement. Pourquoi Parce que le pâturage des obus se confondent sur les sites de forage. Le total vient de s'implanter dans le pâturage des populations. Et total aussi, essayer de, de faire écarter les gens de ce pâturage. Et c'est ça que le total n'arrive pas à comprendre. Et il dit il n'y a pas de gens ici, c'est faux. Ça c'est faux. Il y a beaucoup de gens ici, des éleveurs, qui habitent un peu partout dans tous les coins de la zone. C'est comme ça la vie des gens ici. There is little evidence that Total's intent is to improve the lives of the local people. Le village d'Ambounar, c'est le village le plus proche du site de le camp de la compagnie totale ici à Bemlang. Les gens ici, ils n'ont pas, ils n'ont pas de, de rizières, mais ils sont tous des éleveurs. Donc, ils souffrent beaucoup de problèmes de, de la nourriture. Et actuellement, donc, c'est la, la période la plus dure dans la saison. Et c'est pourquoi on, on ne voit pas beaucoup de monde ici, parce que les gens se, se vont dans la, dans la nature pour chercher de quoi manger pour la famille. Cette pression sur la nature, ici, c'est une pression qui sont déjà là avant l'arrivée de Total. Donc, l'arrivée de Total aussi, il limite l'espace où les gens euh, vivent, de un et de deux, et, et ils détruisent aussi pour son, pour son usage les plantes. Total a conçu ce, ce bâtiment, je pense, pour les, pour les étrangers qui vont venir ici. Ça s'est conçu pour un gîte d'étape et non pas pour les besoins du village. Il y a beaucoup d'enfants ici, mais il n'y a pas d'école. C'est ça le besoin des gens ici. Il y a Total et, et, et il vient ici pour parler avec les gens et non pas euh, impliquer les gens dans la décision qu'il a prise. On vient de dire, on a besoin de charrues, on a besoin de herse, on a besoin de bêtes de trait, on a besoin de, des produits phytosanitaires. Et Total accepte ces suggestions et jusqu'à maintenant, euh, Total n'arrive à répondre à ses besoins. To export the tar sands from Madagascar, Total would need to construct a pipeline to the nearest port. The most direct route is through an area provisionally declared as a national park. C'est un parc, c'est un parc national dans la région Melaki. Ce parc s'appelle Beanka, euh, qui a son statut juridique provisoire. Il y a des richesses ici, même en végétation, en animal, en oiseau et tout ça. Le problème, c'est que euh, si le gouvernement n'arrive pas à accélérer l'octroi le, le, du statut, statut définitif de ce parc, ce n'est pas facile pour les, les régions et la population ici de... de de stopper total, de pénétrer dans le parc. Les recherches scientifiques commencent actuellement. Faire les inventaires des insectes, des oiseaux, des, des, même les plantes. La dernière fois, les chercheurs m'ont dit qu'ils trouvent six, six espèces de café ici dans la forêt. C'est vous qui êtes la première victime euh, s'il y a dénaturation de ce parc. Vous devrez de nous aider à faire des plaidoiries et des lobbying auprès des, des grandes compagnies internationales pour négocier sur ce point, parce que c'est un, un, un site très très fragile. Mm -hmm. Si on va exploiter ce gisement, 
il y aura certainement des pollutions énormes. Et déjà, on n'a même pas de moyens de contrôler la qualité des eaux, par exemple. Si, qu quels que soient les résultats que Total va donner, ou n'importe quelle compagnie qui va exploiter ce gisement, l'administration n'aura pas les moyens de vérifier s'ils ont dit « Ouais, il y a euh, tel PPM d'hydrocarbures de, 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 aromatiques. » Comment va-t-on vérifier ça Parce que, par exemple, au Canada, je pense et je suis sûre que l'administration a les moyens, ou même les sociétés civiles ont les moyens de vérifier, de contrôler la qualité des eaux. To find out how Canadians deal with the problems posed by tar sands, Holly visits the heart of tar sands mining, the Canadian province of Alberta. Hopefully your visit to Alberta can be a really good learning opportunity because you know, Pembina and the different groups here that are trying to work on this issue are fighting the fact that the industry is huge. You know, it's basically tripled in production over the last 20 years. And so today, the impacts are already, you know, near unmanageable because we've been running it for so long um, with really inadequate regulation to ensure that it was done properly. Conventional oil is liquid. It's underground in a reservoir and you drill a hole into it and basically either the oil comes gushing out or you have to pump it out. But oil sands is mixed with sand and it's thick like tar. And so that right there is the very first step of why it's so much harder to get oil out of it is because you can't just drill a, a pipe into it and then pump it out. Someone before they get into oil sands extraction can look at Alberta and to see, you know, is this something that we really want to do in our country okay. and know beforehand what the impacts are mm -hmm. so that you can make a proper and informed decision before mm -hmm. it actually becomes into a very, very large scale operation. This is picture from the Peace Region. Mm -hmm. So this is where the leak happened, close to where my family lives. Mm -hmm. So this is on the ground, and this is what it looks like from the air, like all of that. And I was like, that's the little people in the hazmat suits. So it just totally took over the area. What happened was that it, the eruption, and this is... Molina Labocan Massimo, so a Greenpeace like activist, is also a member of the Cree First Nations people. The tar sands? Her family live in the Tar Sands region. This is a tailing pond that we are standing in front of. Um, it looks kind of like a lake from afar, but as you get close, you can see that it's actually toxic sludge. There's a whole host of um, toxic chemicals that are the byproduct of the extraction process. So it's um, arsenic, cyanide, mercury, lead, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, nymphenic acids. So there's a lot of um, issues with these tailing ponds because they're toxic sludge, and so they're just sitting on the landscape and leaching into the watershed. One of the most affected communities is the Cree First Nation town of Fort Mackay, situated on the banks of the Athabasca River, right in the middle of the tar sands operations. We can't even fish anymore, and we can't even drink water from the river. We were here before, before these oil industry people here in Fort Mackay. We, we live here for years, thousands of years, I guess, my ancestors, you know. We weren't even aware of what was going on. Mm. It just, they just did whatever they want to do without asking our First Nation people. We get crumbs, you might as well say, pennies. They give a little bit of money to the school, uh, daycare, I think. Why do you think Hudson Bay is so rich today? Mm -hmm. Because of us, us Native people, right? Mm -hmm. they, they give us trinkets, trinkets. They give us trinkets, and they, they get big, big pile of beavers mm -hmm. and made lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. See what, what the oil company is doing to us? They're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. same thing.
Athabascans see the environmental risks incurred by tar sands mining, potentially destroying their world, as it has for the Canadian First Nations. However, if the European Union succeeds in its efforts to regulate emissions from tar sands, it could set an international precedent which would limit the global expansion of dirty oil. Right now, there's only about nine companies operating right now, if that. Yeah. But there's 22 more coming in, you know, mm -hmm. and they're coming in from all over the world. Everybody wants a piece of this tar sands, mm -hmm. you know, so everybody wants a piece of, might as well say, our mm -hmm. lives as well, too, because we're going we're gonna to lose not only our traditional territory, but we're going to lose who we are as, mm. as indigenous people. Yeah, Canada is not the only place uh, in the world where uh, tar sand is mined or where uh, there are plants. There are many countries in Africa also, and I think that if uh, there are problems in Canada, then uh, the problems in African countries might be much worse. If it is developed, uh, yeah. it is, uh, the problems are more, uh, more yeah. big than yeah. Canada, yeah. I think. Yeah. And we yeah. need your support to, yeah. to stop it. Yeah. We have a legislation which sets a target to uh, reduce uh, the carbon footprint of transport fuel, and then we would sit, treat with sealed gloves uh, some of the most uh, carbon uh, intensive uh, uh, fuel sources, then uh, it, uh, then we would not be honest with uh, our own, own, own policy. Back in Madagascar, it is the end of the dry season. The river at Morafembe is at its lowest point, providing barely enough water to meet the local community's basic needs. Holly and Jean-Pierre have returned to show the community the devastating impacts of tar sands in Canada and to discuss what it will mean if Total or any other oil company goes ahead with tar sands extraction in Madagascar. L'État malgache a considéré les, les industries euh, minières comme des industries stratégiques nécessaires pour le développement de, de Madagascar. <muches> Nous, nous commençons euh, à, à mettre en place des structures, nous commençons à avoir des informations, des preuves, et nous savons très, parce que nous savons très bien que ce sera, va être, ce sera, cela va être une guerre de communication entre nous et, et l'État et les compagnies pétrolières. Back in the capital, the concern is not just about the local impacts, but also about the country's future contribution to limiting climate emissions. On n'a pas besoin d'exploiter Bemulang pour notre développement. On pourrait développer autre chose. Quelle est la place de ce gisement de bitume de Bemulang dans la politique énergétique de Madagascar L'autre fois, on a entendu parler, le ministre, il a dit que en 2050, Madagascar utilisera 60, 75% de l'énergie en, en énergie renouvelable. La question se pose, si vraiment on va dans ce sens, pourquoi on va créer des problèmes avec Bemulang In Brussels, at the European Union, the fight continues over the climate and environmental impacts of oil produced from tar sands. With the European oil industry and the Canadian government still arguing that there should be no distinction between tar sands and conventional oil. We understand that Canadians don't want tar sands to be treated differently than conventional oil because it would set a precedent um, for other um, countries in the world who might go down the same route. 
because very often European standards get adopted around the world. As soon as you want to change something, there are a lot of companies, because Shell is majorly investing in the tar sands in Canada, but also other governments like the Canadian government, they immediately go against this, this, this potential decision. And that's a good example of how the struggle, the power struggle is going on here at the European level. And most of the time, and that's really unfortunate to say, is that the, the ones who have the, the, the oil in interest, they win. If the European Union succeeds in designating tar sands as a dirty oil, it will make oil companies rethink their strategies to extract tar sands around the globe, making for a cleaner and more climate-friendly future. The final result of this, uh, of this directive may actually mean a, a, a stop or a go-ahead for tar sands uh, oil uh, on the European market. So we are operating in a very a particular situation and that gives indeed a feeling that uh, that you know that a lot is at stake and we really can change things.